giant stuffed animal at FAO Schwarz or scan the designer shoe displays in a Macy's department store, you've experienced the genius of this evening's guest speaker. When it comes to designing compelling, productive retail spaces, Kenneth Walker is the man. Since 1970, when he founded Walker Group, Ken, sorry, all right. that's all right. We're getting a little feedback. There we go. Thank you. Ken has been recognized as the industry leader in translating marketing and merchandising objectives to the world's best retailers in three-dimensional design demonstrating a unique understanding of both customer and merchant. Ken Walker helps his clients create commercial environments that are both inspiring and functional. Two characteristics of great architecture. Expressing his extraordinary creativity on multiple fronts, Ken has been a major force in product design, licensing, and branding. His 101 00, the mark of the millennium, which grew to be a universal symbol for the transition of the year 2000, was licensed to 80 manufacturers and sold to over 30 countries around the globe. I was a partner, incidentally, in that. He also loves to race fast cars, has brought up that passion in his role as chairman of the Board of Advisors at the College of Creative Studies here in Detroit. Ken has taught at the Rhode Island School of Design, Harvard, MIT, and the Architectural Association of London. He's a graduate of Brown University and Harvard University Graduate School of Design, where he earned his master's degree in architecture. Ken was elected a fellow of the American Institute of Architects as a charger member of the Interior Design Hall of Fame. He's my very good friend, so let me please join in welcoming Ken Walker. Wow, a lot of you have nothing better to do on a nice afternoon. It's nice, nice to see you all. Um, how many of you come from uh, engineering and science background? H how many of you were painters or poets before? Huh? Oh, a couple. A couple. How many of you read The Fountainhead when you were a kid? More people read The Fountainhead. <laughs> that's, that's good. Uh, the, that's probably the fountainhead has done more for architects than, than anything else I, I know of. The uh, meetings like this for me are really learning experiences. I, 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 what I want to do today, and, and after I do a little slideshow, is really have a dialogue with you. I know it was a little late in the game, but did any of you uh, actually have a chance to read any part of The World is Flat? The world is flat is very relevant to today. This presentation that I'm going to do today is a little bit different than the others. It, this is not about technical stuff. What I'm trying to do with all the students that I work with is find ways to get people to innovate. My career has been based on innovation, and I've been very fortunate in that I've had clients who are receptive to it. And part of it is having a good client and pushing, the, and pushing the envelope. So what I want to focus on today is really right brain thinking. I have tremendous respect for people who are left brain because I'm not one of them. I'm not very analytical. I'm not very uh, good with numbers. But anything visual for me is interesting. I was a painter uh, uh, before I became an architect and graph supported myself with graphic design at the beginning. So for me, design, whether it's architecture or graphics or packaging or industrial design, 
is really all the same, all the same thing. So I'm going to walk you through what, uh, to, to me, oops, I'm going the right direction here. I'm going to walk you through the creative process as I see it, and hopefully offer some clues for going forward. Also, I want to know how many of you are the very best student in your class? Okay, I got two, three, not enough. Not just three? Oh, four, we got four. Do I hear five? <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do now is get your right brain working. So now you've just graduated, you've been made a marketing director at a company that has almost no budget and you've inherited, let's say, all these television spots, and you have no money to really create uh, video. So all you have is music. So I'm going to play you some music, and you're going to tell me what we're advertising. <laughs> what? I couldn't hear. What did what, what you say? Lions winning the Super Bowl. Okay. <laughs> Good. Good. Uh, what, what else? What, what else could we be advertising with that? <laughs> I like that one. What? Smartphones? Smartphones? Uh, what else? Christmas. Anything else? A, a new car? Okay. All right, I'll give you another clue. Same advertising. Okay. What are we advertising? Bail bondsman. Okay. What? <laughs> what else? What else? Beer. Beer. Okay. Bose stereo. Bose stereo. All right. Go to the head of the class. Let's why is this not working? <laughs> I'm having a little trouble with this thing. Okay, that it was Viagra. The slide seems to be right. okay. We'll do it once more. That was a softball. It was Viagra. Now this one's a little harder. So try. It. Okay, what are we advertising? This one's harder. <laughs> Vacations? Okay, <laughs> that could be. <laughs> what else? Kind the right brains are asleep. Get the, the, who? Swifter? Swiffer. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, well, that's, that's an interesting bridge. <laughs> that one I haven't heard. We have to talk later. <laughs> what what else? I'll give you another I'll give you another piece of music. You cheated, you lied, you said that you love me. You cheated, you lied, you said that you want me. Okay. Getting any closer? Online dating sites. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> what? What? Divorce attorneys. Divorce attorneys. <laughs> good. Good. Chinese uh, vehicles. Chinese vehicles. <laughs> 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 okay. La last. Last clue. If 
write it anymore? Auto insurance. Auto insurance. Good. Used car salesman. Used car salesman. Closing in. Uh, this is this is unfortunate. I mean, uh, I'm one of those people that's Mac based, and I'm, 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 I feel like I'm uh, on the lonely planet. <laughs> it's, ne it's never compatible with these things. Anyway, uh, the answer to that was Madoff Securities, <laughs> <laughs> which was supposed to appear on the screen, but didn't. Uh, so the, the right brain does wonderful things. It makes you see differently. It makes you act differently. And what I love to do is try to find a way to get the right brain working, working over time. And in, in the late 80s, when computers took over the practice of architecture and a lot of, a lot of things we do, a lot of things changed. And that's why something like the world is flat I think has some, has some relevancy. And working in, with the technology that is out there today and the method of studying architecture and design is really very different. But what it does, it, it's very empowering in that if you want to innovate and you want to invent the future, you want to create something for the future, the best way to do is to invent it. And that combination of right and left brain thinking is how you do it. And what I want to show you today are some things that are very appealing to me uh, and stuff that I look at that is my way of seeing the world and trying to get that balance between reality and, and, and myth, which makes up a lot of what the design process is. And it's a very interesting uh, field of study. If you're studying architecture, for example, I found that it was incredibly relevant to the business world because you start with, a, with a, a complex set of issues and what you're trying to do is really distill it down uh, to something that is both uh, uh, functional and beautiful, hopefully. And the uh, idea of decision making, what comes first, how do you, how do you analyze the process of design, uh, takes some real strategic thinking. but if you use the right brain uh, to influence it, oftentimes the end result can be that point of innovation or differentiation, which I think makes for su successful design. And technology now is playing a bigger, bigger part of it. One of the problems with technology, it also inhibits a lot of people. We were talking at lunch today about people who draw and people who can only do CAD or computer-aided design. And um, I'm of the school that the more hand drawing you can do, uh, the, the freer one becomes. I find that, that computer-aided design uh, is somewhat limiting. And when it comes, in fact, to doing presentations, especially to clients, I find that most CAD drawings make people fall asleep because they see they all look the same. It's very hard to do a lot of differentiation when everyone's using uh, this, almost the same, the same palette. So the idea of technology in the practice of architecture is extraordinary, because the firm of the future is not going to be 100 architects all over one roof. It'll probably be in 20 different offices, all happening at the same time, or some people working at home on specific areas. And that's why um, The World is Flat is such a wonderful book in terms of, of, of sort of predicting where certain businesses and practices are going to evolve to. And to me, good design is something like this Swiss Army knife. It's getting all those little pieces in, uh, of the design to work together. And that's hard. And we'll talk about it a little bit with, uh, with retail design. But the companies that most of you like, are all mostly in the retail arena, and I'm sure when I ask you the question later of which ones do you like, uh, half of you are going to come out with the same, the same answers. And they're usually the ones that, uh, did something blow up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, usually they're the ones where everything speaks with one voice. And that's what I like about this little bit of design here. And in order to do innovation, whether it's in your own office and especially with a client, you often have to overcome the, the left brain thinking 
that people have and clients very often have. Sometimes the hardest thing for a designer is to overcome the inertia that exists within the corporate structure. And you say to someone uh, in, in corporate land sometimes, hey, I want to innovate, and that's sort of the first, the first reaction, where they point to you and say, you're going to be head of innovation, and they go into the hole. But it's not limited uh, to individuals. It's also groups that do it as, <laughs> as, as, as well. And uh, so, so getting across that, that innovation threshold um, is hard. You have, to, you have to really believe in yourself. That's why I asked, who's the best student in the class? Uh, whether you are or not, and I was far from the best student in the class, uh, but I believed in what I was doing. And if you have that belief, you can often convince um, patrons, sponsors, clients uh, to try things they may not have done if you believe in it enough and can articulate it and, de and demonstrate that it can work. And what I find happens often, you see something that's interesting, and I'm very enamored with, with street furniture, with natural marketplaces, things of that sort. And no normally, let's say you're, you're running Taco Bell or something like that, and they see a new food concept. This was a yam lady that I found in Japan. They'll, they'll probably do things like um, bring in McKinsey or Bain or one of these big consulting firms, and they'll do a lot of analytics, and they'll, they'll do, you know, everybody will be wearing a dark suit, uh, and uh, some of them haven't shaved yet, but they're all there in dark suits, and there's at least 11 people on a, on a team doing market research. So they put it all together, and they study this, and then they usually come up with something that looks like that which is not nearly the best way to go. And it, it's, it's been happening, really, for, for centuries. You know, everybody knows Michelangelo's uh, Statue of David. Uh, but before David did this, uh, the Medici hired a committee. And this is what was the original version. <laughs> and uh, uh, <laughs> it didn't, wasn't, didn't have quite the same resonance uh, <laughs> of Michelangelo. So the clues out there are really all around us. And what I find interesting is you never know where you're going to see, where you're going to see a clue. And, and you have to almost train yourself. And what I love to do, I always have, now that everybody has smartphones, you can take a picture of things. And I probably have 20,000 images uh, that I've just collected o over the years of just things that I look at as being, as being clues. And I'm going to show you uh, in a few things here uh, some things I like and, and why. In product design, it's very challenging because if you do product design, you want it to be ubiquitous. And you have to know a lot of, of, of things before you start. You can't wing it. But if you're going to design things that go in, in different countries, there's so many cultural variants. There's so many uh, different laws and rules and regulations that you really have to understand the playing field that you're working in. When I did a lot of traveling, I used to travel, I'm sure all of you do the same, with adapter plugs for every country, because uh, there's so much differentiation that unless you have all these things with you, and if you're designing a product, you have to know the environment in, in which you're working. And this, this kind of retail environment is, is very competitive. Think of every little lineal inch here as real estate. And you have a piece of real estate, and you have to differentiate yourself from the real estate next to you. It's pretty hard to do. And yet, things come up, and people, all these manufacturers want to get more shelf space and more brand extension. And somebody sent me, sent me this, which is probably one of the more <laughs> interesting. <laughs> this is, Whoever the, whoever the brand manager is at WD-40 is, um, is having a field day. So the clues turn up in different places. I don't know quite where it's going to be. Um, I, love, I, I, I love product design like this, that where, where it's just so unique. And this anthropomorphic uh, crab cracker uh, won an ID award about four or five years ago. And I sought out the manufacturer, and I bought eight of these. I think they sold in total 12 
that I only hated them. But it was, it, it, it was, just, it was just terrific. And uh, the idea of taking you know, a, a function that's been a, a need, creating a, a functional solution that has this anthropomorphic look of the crab claw, I thought was great. Oops, there's just, that's, that's how it works. It's really terrific. Uh, I think there's a lot of influence of the automobile on a lot of things, and vice, and vice versa. I think that Roadside America, which I'm particularly fond of, is just filled with clues on, uh, on how to find uh, innovative, innovative solutions. And in product design, there's um, a, an immense carryover. I mean, this calculating machine doesn't need those vents, but it looks like it can calculate at 100 miles an hour, just with the little styling, little styling clues. And uh, I mean, the, the, the vents on the Testarossa really don't do much to cool the brakes, but it looks pretty cool. So there's, there's a lot of crossover between fashion and, and automotive and product design and automotive. I've, I looked at this as sort of an architectural solution. Uh, this is an idea whose time may not have yet come, but I thought this was a very clever uh, idea. Imagine, imagine it going from, you know, you wear your flats during the day, and then you go to stilettos at night by just pressing, pressing the little heel button. It's very convenient. Or imagine a building uh, that could do this. It'd be pretty interesting. I think this is... <laughs> I think this was one of the better, better uh, diet aids that I think I've ever seen. Uh, it's, really, it's really a wonderful idea. And all these great uh, industrial ID competitions and whatnot bring, bring out these things. And I, I just collect them because I think they're just uh, uh, fantastic. And uh, this was one of those uh, award winners. Uh, if you've ever tried to carry, if you, uh, have you been, uh, worked in a restaurant? Sure. God, I worked in restaurants all the time. The, but that's kind of neat. You don't drop it on someone. Well, this was pretty good. I think the, the, the cup and biscuit holder. And for the, the workstation, is this showing up there? Yeah. How can I get the contrast? These aren't. Is there something I can press on my computer to get more contrast? Yes. It's not translating well from what's on my computer.